What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So it's been a long time since I did any kind of Orenois type uh, tutorial, so I figured I'd uh, talk about how to make a skyscraper using these shapes. So before we get started, today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, please make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video, we're going to use the extension Vornois and Conic Curve in order to create kind of an organic skyscraper type shape. And so the first thing I will know is I will link to both this extension and also True Bend from TomTom Tom in the notes down below. But this extension is very touchy um, so it's it's a little bit unstable I found my sketchups crashed a couple different times doing this so save often when you're doing this work but in this case what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna model our skyscraper shape flat and then we're gonna stand it up and bend it and so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna figure out what the uh, what the size of our building would be if we were to lay it down and then flatten it so if you were to take a like circular or cylindrical building and flatten it um, and then we're gonna figure out what those dimensions are gonna be. And in this case, I'm assuming the building's gonna be about 150 feet high, and I don't know what the diameter of a building like this would be. Let's go with 75 feet. So we'll do 75 feet, comma, 150 feet. That's kind of a rough size for our building. So you can see how if you were to flatten a skyscraper, this might be about how it would look. It would probably be a little bit wider than this, but that's, uh, you know what, we'll go ahead and move this over another 25 feet or so. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the extension Vornois and Conic Curve in order to create or generate our shapes. But the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of break this up by levels. Um, I, I don't want to get super, super in depth with it. Um, you definitely can, but what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to right click on this line in the left hand side and I'm going to divide it. And you can see how as I divide it, I can kind of move my mouse and see about how tall each one of these levels are going to be. So in this case, if each level was about um, 13 feet or maybe 12 feet, they'd be about 12 foot 6 inches high. So I'm just going to divide this into segments because I'm going to use that to draw my lines. And so the way this extension is going to work is it basically basically uses a mathematical equation to draw kind of an organic shape. I don't want to get too deep into how exactly it works, but let's say for example that I was to take this shape and I was to activate conic curve and click inside of it, you can see how it's going to use math in order to do an offset there. So in this case, maybe if we were to take this to give you a little bit better example, if we were to draw kind of an offset shape like this, and then we'll just use the tab key and we'll adjust our offset up a little bit. You can see how this kind of uses those edges in order to create a circular face. So that's the principle that we're gonna use in order to do this. But we want this to be a little bit random. You know, we don't want this to just be like 10 of these shapes. So if I was to just do an offset here and then just copy this, times 10 or 12, I don't remember. You see, that's not a very interesting building. In fact, it's really a weird building. So we don't want that. What we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna start drawing some random lines along this face. And so I'm just gonna move them kind of up and down like this. And I'm just gonna draw them per level. They don't necessarily have to correspond perfectly with anything that's going on in your shape. In fact, it's better if they don't. You kind of have to assume that this is almost like what the uh, building skin would look like, and it doesn't really have anything to do with the floors that would be inside of the building. So I'm just going to randomly draw some shapes in here so that we get kind of a different looking skin. And so now we have our general face kind of roughed out. And so if I was to take this right now and I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna make a copy of it, I generally recommend making a copy of these because this is kind of a destructive extension in the sense that it'll go in here and change this and then it gets really hard to uh, um, remove any of those changes. But the first thing I'm gonna do is save my model. And so if you wanted to, you could come in here now and you could use this to draw some curves and we could go ahead and set an offset. And one thing that can get a little bit annoying about this extension is sometimes it'll draw in the faces and sometimes it won't. So we're going to have to mess around with that a little bit. But for right now, you can see how what that would have done is that would have 
created one continuous curve all the way along this face. And we don't necessarily want that. We want this to be kind of broken up organically. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm generally kind of drawing these to the different points, um, the different vertices that are in here. And you could also create something like this using guide points. I've done another tutorial in the past where I did that. But just generally speaking, I'm just breaking this up in kind of some random ways again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these faces now in order to generate our Vornwa or our conic curve shapes. So once again, probably make another copy of this off to the side again, just so uh, just so if you need to go back and make changes or do something different, you can do that. First thing I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna save my model and then I'm just gonna click this button for conic curve in face. And what conic curve in face does is that allows us to add these curves inside these faces. But as we do this, we wanna give this a little bit of an offset because we want there to be a skin in between these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate that and tap the tab key and I'm gonna set my offset to 500 millimeters. What that's gonna do is that's gonna give me more of an offset. So I'm gonna set my offset to 500 and then I'm just gonna start clicking in these faces. And you can see what this is doing is this is drawing these in here. And you can see how sometimes it doesn't like the shapes that we're using and it won't draw a circle in there. And uh, there may be some things that you need to come in here and clean up as well. So as you're drawing these, like for example, and I should have been doing this as I went, but as you're drawing these, you may notice that some of these angles are a little too sharp. And what you're doing is you're kind of um, getting an overlap in here, which you don't necessarily want. So I'm just gonna go in and manually fix that but I'm just kind of keeping an eye on these shapes and looking at the offsets that we have here to make sure they're not overlapping. Like right there, for example, those two faces overlapped and I don't necessarily want that. So it's just kind of a trial and error process. I wish I could tell you there was an easy button for how to do this and maybe there is. If somebody has it, let me know. And so now what we need to do is we need to come in here and we need to kind of try to fix these shapes that it's not allowing us to draw draw inside of. And the only thing I found that works is just kind of randomly coming in here and trying some different things. And actually this is a note that I'm adding in later. I think what may have happened is I think when I drew this, I drew one of these segments and I'll draw a circle around it on the screen um, as um, two different line segments. So um, this looks like it's a single line, but it's actually broken up into a couple different segments. So I think if you have straight lines that are broken up into segments, that becomes a problem for this extension. So the only thing I've found that works is just randomly kind of cutting these shapes off. And it seems like maybe cutting these off before the edge seems to be helping a little bit. But I, I really do not know what's driving this behavior by this extension or else I would tell you. <laughs> Okay, so once you've gotten these all drawn in and you can see how I had to do a significant amount of just kind of cutting edges off of these faces. Um, once you've gotten these all drawn in, what you wanna do is you wanna delete out all the interior edges. And so I'm just gonna manually come in here with the eraser and just erase these out real quick. And the reason for that is because we want there to be one in, in, uninterrupted face in here because we're gonna push pull it in a second. So I'm just coming in here just dragging my eraser along all of these edges. And the fastest way to do that is to find the areas where the most vertices intersect and drag your mouse over those because it erases out multiple segments at once when you do that. Okay, so now what that's given us is that's given us a series of different um, circular shapes on this face. And you'll notice that some of them are in here as groups and some of them aren't. Well, we wanna go ahead and we wanna make those into their own faces. So we wanna explode that. And before I do that, I'm gonna make another copy. And I'm just gonna save this over here. And you can see I'm just making those copies just so if I ever have to go back and change something, I have the ability to do that. But for now, I'm just gonna drag across this, right click and click the button for explode. And what 
what that should do is that should break this up, assuming you don't have things overlapping, so that you have one uninterrupted face across your object. And so probably the quickest thing to do at this point is because we want to leave these in here as a glass material, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and apply the glass before I do any kind of push-pull. So I'm just going to double click in here. You can see how that basically selects this uninterrupted face and all the edges. And then I'm going to hold the shift key and click and drag a box across these. And then I'm just going to come over, activate the translucent glass blue option, and I'm just going to click to apply that to all of these faces at once. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push pull this up and give it a little thickness. And in this case, I'm going to push pull this up probably, we'll say 18 inches. Um, depending on how realistic you're trying to be with your facade, you may do that a little bit different. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to stand it up. So I'm just going to select it all and I'm going to use the rotate tool in order to stand this up. So I'm going to turn it up 90 degrees. And it looks like I had one edge that wasn't selected and that kind of messed up my geometry. So we're just going to try that again. So we'll rotate that up 90 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click and I'm going to click make group. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the soften edges slider down in my tray in order to soften all of those edges around here. And you may have to play around with the slider a little bit to get all of those hidden, but you can see how as I drag that left and right, things will soften um, a little more. You don't want to drag it too far because it softens and smooths everything and things start looking a little bit weird. But now what we have is we have our roughed out skyscraper shape and now we need to bend it. Well luckily TomTom Tom came out with an extension that does like a true 360 degree bend of an object. So in this case what I would do is I would activate this option for true bend and since this was stood up and the red axis runs along the front of this object, I can go ahead and I can uh, bend this. Um, if your object was laying down and you did that, then you're probably going to have to adjust your axis because this extension bends things along the red axis. But you can see how I can just click and drag this out and this will let me set this to 360 degrees. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter key to finalize that bend. And so now, what I have in here is I have my Voronois tower. And you could do some more stuff with this, like for example, if you wanted to, you could, uh, you could use the circle tool to draw a circle, give it a little bit of thickness. Let's say this would be like a six inch slab or something like that. And then you could make this a group or a component. And you can use the move tool in copy mode to create different copies of this to create actual floors inside your skyscraper. So in this case, I could move this until it's basically level with the top. And then I could do a divided by, and let's say, I think we said 12 floors divided by 12. So that would copy this so that you have different floors in here. And you could actually come in and you could uh, like furnish those or do whatever you want with them. But this is a great way to create this bent Voronois tower shape. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Like I said, this can get a little bit finicky and uh, you're gonna have to play around with it a little bit to get it to work just cause that extension for some reason mostly works but sometimes crashes and sometimes just won't draw the shapes but this should give you a good idea for how to do this so that you can uh, start working with it. Um, that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Are you working with any shapes like this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.